and welcome to an all new episode of DIY Faller. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial, a quick rundown of how to use Sound Booth by Adobe. Uh, this is a CS5 version I'll be working in, um, but a lot of what I'm doing here should apply to your own audio editing program. First thing I'm going to do is show you the sort of sounds we're going to be making. Some of these uh, you might actually recognize. They were used in the episode four sci-fi episode of DIY Foley. Check it out if you haven't already. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's one of the last real big episodes I'm gonna be doing um, for a few weeks. Uh, let me show you my work through uh, how I made those sounds originally. Okay, so here we have our poorly named Untitled Multitrack 4 um, .asnd, that's the multitrack format. Uh, here is the multitrack, it's just three simple tracks, but it's a lot of shortcut layered noises, which makes it sound uh, very technical, very futuristic, very sci-fi, very obnoxious as a keyboard if you ever had to use one. Close that and we will open up a new Adobe Sound Booth window. Okay, so uh, here's Sound Booth. Actually, I already have. Uh, we're gonna make a new multi-track file. So we're gonna go down, this is the uh, new files uh, button. And I'm going to make a new multi-track file. Now we wanna save this. Uh, so I'm gonna just right click and save as. Uh, this will also name it. I'm gonna call this uh, LCARS uh, Tutorial. And I'll just save it inside of a pots and pans folder in the resources folder, which, by the way, is in the description, so you can follow along. So go download it um, and try this out yourself. Now I'm going to double click on my file index pane, and I'm going to go to my resources folder and pull in pots and pans. Here it is. We'll double click to open that. And here is my pots and pans noise. Is take this first sound and isolate it with O, which is out. So uh, I is in, O is out to set the end point. And now we have a selection within our total file here. So I'm going to save this selection separately as uh, noise one. So. Here's noise one. And uh, first of all, a few things I'm gonna do to it. I'm gonna raise the volume just a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to go under tasks over here, which is similar to effects, but it's, it's a larger, uh, more general sort of category. Changing the pitch and timing, which is what we're gonna do here. Uh, computer noises, uh, things that sound futuristic, I've generally found uh, are high pitched um, and truncated, very short, uh, very cut off, very absolute. So uh, what we're going to do is shorten the clip overall, uh, maybe by 50%. <clears throat> and then I'm going to shift the pitch way, way up, maybe 35. So here we have our new sound. As you can see, it was good that I raised the volume because when you actually raise the pitch, uh, it lowers the volume overall. So that, that sounds interesting like that. But here's what it actually sounds like. Take noise one. Well, first I'm going to go into my multi-track file, LCARS tutorial, and I'm going to drag noise one into my first row here. There is noise one. Uh, obviously my scale is a little large, so I'm going to go up to this thing uh, outlined in yellow orange up here. Uh, this is my zoom window, uh, so it'll modify how much of the main track editor here that I see. So if you just click and drag from one end, Now, if you notice, while I pan through this, it's not panning through perfectly. Uh, instead, it's jumping, uh, it's skipping pieces, and, and honestly, it sounds a lot more technical, a lot more uh, like an L car, uh, like a Star Trek button being pressed or a command being received uh, when, it, when it is skipping here. So here's my technique, is I find a spot that sounds really good when I'm skipping through it, when I'm cutting around, and I will isolate that, that section 
and I will cut it up so it does sound like that. And then I'll have a, uh, a good sound effect file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing and copy it, paste. By the way, wherever your red column tracking line is, is where things will paste. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're putting files and you don't want, you know, way over here or something. Now what I'm going to do is on the first one here uh, that I'm preserving just to keep it around, um, I'm going to leave this one alone completely, okay? I'm going to move it over here or something so it's out of the way. On the second one, uh, I'm going to go over to the section that we want. And actually, if you go to the edge of any sound file, you'll see this symbol. Zoom in on that. This symbol means uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like an alternative to cutting a file. You can click and drag the edge of the file inwards. Um, basically, I'm cutting out all this extra information that I don't think I need immediately right now. I'm going to drag over to where I want it to start. And on the other end here, click and drag inwards, and remember any good sci-fi noise is a series of short clicks and beeps, so I'm going to make this like literally as small as possible, I'll zoom out, and drag it in at the beginning. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tiny file, I'm going to copy it and paste it like six times. This is going to be a series of beeps and clicks. So uh, the reason I'm using two uh, rows here, two layers, is so that I can overlap these noises um, so they're not like just right next to each other. We want them to be somewhat irregular, uh, somewhat overlapped. It'll make it sound more, more natural, more like uh, a well-designed sound and less like all the same noise over and over again. <clears throat> Another thing you can do here with this sixth file, sixth file here, I'll show you. Uh, if I just extend that out here, as we can see, the entire track is still stored inside that tiny one there. Uh, I'm gonna extend that out a little bit further. Another way to get variety, obviously, since most of this sounds good, is to take another section of it. So we'll just remember, recall, right here was where the uh, the previous sound was that we were using. All these are one sound. They're all the same sound. Um, any good computer noise has a variety of sounds in it, so I'm just going to crop down to right about here. Copy this new sound file that's a bit downwind. Um, it's a slightly different pitch, slightly different tone. And I'm going to take some of these and mix them in to our current series of beeps and clicks and whistles and hisses. Bring that in. Uh, as you can see, uh, the more work you put into this, the more complicated it gets. The uh, more taxing on your system it gets, the more tiny little files you have to deal with. So this can easily get out of hand, but that's the fun of it. So let's take a listen to what we've created so far. Not quite there yet. Uh, what I might do is add some more space in between these particular sound files. Extend the length of a few of them. Remember, uh, one of your best ways to make a uh, series of sounds sound good is to have variety in there. Um, if you really want to put time into it, a variety of pitch, a variety of sources for the noise, um, all these help add texture. Uh, this is definitely a sort of feel it as you go, try things. What I might do is add a few tracks. So here is the tracks button. You can add or delete tracks. I recommend against adding video tracks. That's more of a uh, premiere option. <clears throat> and I'm going to borrow another clip from our master file. Copy, paste. Down here sounds pretty good. We're going to drag the file in. Here's our in point. Roughly. Here's our out point. What we want is that sort of stutter. 
sort of jump cut. This guy. Cool. It sounds pretty good. It's a little short. It sounds like a single button right now. Um, so maybe uh, any good series of button noises uh, has multiple parts to it. So we'll drag back to the beginning here and paste in this little part that I just selected. Uh, Remember, you can always, always, always reuse things that you've already taken time to painstakingly cut out, things that you know sound good. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's much easier, it's much quicker to repaste the same sounds over and over again. Okay, so you've created your first L car button futuristic noise. And uh, before I finish the tutorial here, I have one more thing I want to show you. And that is other effects you can add to your noises. So we're going to go back. Here's all the files we've created. Don't mind those. We're going to go back to noise one. Very nice. We're going to go to our effects tab here. I'm going to go down, and there's a few that I wanted to show you. The first one is old time radio. Listen to it now. This adds sort of a uh, over a speaker, over the radio ambience to it. You can apply um, old time radio to voices to make them sound like they're coming out over an intercom or you're communicating with someone on the other side of the screen. Um, you can add it to sounds to add a little bit extra texture to it. There's obviously a lot of things you can try here um, that will modify it in different ways. Heck, it almost sounds like uh, an L card noise right now, actually. But that that is old time radio. Very, very fond of that. Um, this one is sort of fun. Uh, it's more alien, uh, less of your human spaceship, more of the evil enemy aliens uh, that you're trying to kill. If you're, you know, specious like that, whatever your sci-fi is, I won't judge. Unintelligible speech adds sort of a, a wavy reverberation to your noise. <clears throat> Listen to that. With a little bit of work, that could sound like a, a, a phaser gun being fired or something. Uh, this can get really absurd and excessive. You can apply this to voices, actually. It makes them sound kind of alien. Um, that's a nice one. Just go through, experiment with these. Um, try them all. Use them. The obvious one is sci-fi sounds. As you can see, that applies a variety of effects uh, that are all independently modifiable. Now, up here, we still have our multi-track file. I'm going to double click on it to reopen it. Okay, so. <clears throat> Now we have our file, we have to use it, we have to export it. We need to make it a single compressed uh, .wav to right click on our multi-track file here and go to save as. And I will save it. I'm a big fan of .wav. Um, I've heard good things about .mp3. Um, obviously you can do .aif, uh, which is usable in most places. Uh, the rest of these I would avoid. They're sort of large files. Some of them have some extreme compression. Some of them are video formats. Uh, just stick to AIF.wav.mp3. So I'm going to do .wav myself. Uh, I'll leave it as, um, I'll call it future button noise. Yeah, sure. Like you're buttoning a t shirt. 
save it. We want to leave it uncompressed. We don't want it to sound any different. It doesn't look like it gives me an option. Um, the 4800 sample rate is actually really common for a lot of players uh, and a lot of recorders. Uh, sample type, if, <laughs> if you're making a professional movie, I guess you might want 32-bit. Um, I never really pay much attention to that. Channels, definitely, definitely keep it stereo. We're going to say OK. It'll save that file. And here is our compressed .wav file. Cool, so I'm going to close Adobe Sound Booth, uh, save all of our changes, yes to all. And here under our pots and pans folder, we have future button noise. Hopefully the first of many such sounds. Um, thank you for watching, everyone. Please uh, rate and subscribe. Tell me how you like the tutorial. Tell me what you want to see more of, what you want to hear less of. Definitely give me samples of, of the sounds that you make. I would love to see them. I would love to share them with our other viewers. Um, any questions or comments on how to use Soundbooth or trouble that you're having in Soundbooth, uh, if you're working in it right now, don't hesitate to tell me. Um, in the comments section below, uh, everything is welcome. And uh, I will see you all next time.